Hi, I'm George Self, and this is Velocigram. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the gradebook. Let's get started. I've had several questions from instructors about how to use extra credit in the gradebook. In this brief video, I'll show you how to set that up. First, you should keep in mind that extra credit is only available if you aggregate your grades using the simple weighted mean of grades or sum of grades. That means if you're using a weighted mean of grades so you can weight the various categories, then you will not be able to use extra credit. It would be possible to set up your gradebook for weighted mean of grades with each category, like week starting May 28th, being given a certain weight. Then, within each category, you could use sum of grades aggregation. In that case, you would be able to set up extra credit within the category. Keep in mind that if you place an extra credit item within a category, like having some kind of extra credit assignment in the week starting May 28th category, then that extra credit will only offset points lost within that one category. To have extra credit that would offset points lost anywhere in the course, then place that item outside all categories. But this only works if the gradebook's main aggregation method is not weighted mean of grades. Now, despite all these disclaimers, extra credit is extremely easy to set up in a gradebook. If you will look, you'll find a column labeled extra credit. Simply check the items that are supposed to be regarded as extra credit. Now, Moodle will not add the points possible for those items to the course total but it will add any points earned to the student's grades. Uh, as a final note, extra credit never raises your student's scores above 100%. For example, suppose that you have a category worth 100 points, and it includes a 10-point extra credit item. If one of your students is already earning 95 out of the 100 points, then the extra credit item would only be worth up to five points for that student. If you have questions about extra credit, remember, help is only a phone call or click away. Hi, this is Jennifer, and I'm going to show you how to fix a grade override. As you can see, for Abby's student, under her course totals, there's a tan box. That means that grade has been overridden. What will happen when you override a grade in course totals, the grades will not tally correctly. As you can see, Abby has 100, 75, and 95.83. Clearly, the course total should be more than a 50. To correct this, you'll go into your grader report. You'll need to turn editing on. Even if you have course editing on, you'll still need to turn editing on within the grader report. And remember, we are working with Abby student, so we'll scroll over. Here's her course total, 50. So you're going to click the Edit Grade Pencil. And there's an overridden checkbox. If you click that, uncheck that box, and then save the changes. At that point, her grades will tally correctly again. So here's Abby's student, and her course total is actually a 98.22. I hope this has been helpful. Remember, help is only a phone call or a click away. This week we're going to talk about using the Jewel Grader to grade your assignments. Assignments can be in two different categories. One, where a student has submitted work that we will grade, whether that be a file, uh, an online text, something the student submitted and then uh, hit submit for grading. The other type is considered to be an offline assignment where students don't submit anything and you would enter the grades manually as the instructor. Things like uh, if it's an in-class assignment, they did it in class, they handed it to you, um, and then you wanted to enter a grade for them. Let's look at first the type of assignment that has where a student submitted work. When I click on the link for the assignment, I'll go into my summary page. 
Here I'll see that I have nine participants in the class, there were eight submitted, and five need grading. Looking at the submission status, this is what a student would see. They would see um, the rubric that I have presented for this assignment, and they would be able to see um, all the information and, and the requirements for that rubric. So let's click on View and Grade All Submissions. When I first go into my screen, I'll see here that I have five students that are submitted for grading, but I know that there were nine students in the class. What I've done here is I've filtered those so that I only see the ones that need grading. But if I wanted to, I could change my filter. Let's start with no filter. And you'll see that I have all of my students, and we can see here that Bob did not submit anything for this assignment but that my others um, have submitted. And you'll see over on the right-hand side, I do have some scores already in there, meaning I've already graded those three. So rather than going through all three, I'm going to change my filter back to requires grading. And then I'm going to click on Eileen. And I come to my grading page for Eileen. The st submission status tells me um, when they submitted it for graded, where it's at. Um, that the editing status, so this way I know that a student couldn't have changed it. And I can see that it, uh, they submitted the assignment on September 19th. Here's a copy of the file that was submitted. And then with my rubric, I can simply click on the points um, that I want to assign for um, Eileen. So I'll select some points. And now I can provide feedback to uh, comments for Eileen. And then if I wanted, I could add a file. If I had a corrected file or maybe a different sample that I wanted to see, uh, her to see, then I could add that file um, to Eileen. Now that I've graded it, added my comments, I can save and show next. And so this allows me to go through each of my students, open their file, do the grading, provide feedback comments, and it will go directly into the gradebook. This is a great way to be able to provide good feedback into the assignments. So now, if we go to the gradebook, and under functions and graphs, which is where that assignment was, you'll see the different scores that I have here, and then your students will be able to, if we look on a user report, this is what your student will see. We'll choose Eileen, because I made comments on Eileen's assignment. And you'll see, your student will see the assignment, how many points, points were available, and then what score they got, their percentage, and then any feedback or comments that I made. The other type of assignment would be one that um, is an offline assignment where students did not submit any work. So I'm going to click on Homework Assignment, External Site. And again, I can view and grade all submissions. And then I can grade each student. And it will provide a list of students. So it will say here, cannot edit the assignment, because it did not require you to submit anything. So I can give um, Abby um, five points. And then show next. And I can go through each student and enter those grades. And again, by this method, I can go to my course, go to my grades, and I'll see for Abby, the homework assignment for the external site, Abby scored 5 points out of 10, so she scored a 50%. This way, we do not run the risk of overwriting anything in the gradebook. Um, it is recommended that we always use the dual grader um, to grade our assignments. If you have any questions or need help with a Joule grader or entering grades into your gradebook, please give us a call. Remember, help is only a phone call or click away. Hi everyone, it's Jennifer and I'm going to go over how to recalculate a quiz with you. There might come a point in time where you need to change the score of a quiz for some reason. To do so, you're going to select the quiz and you'll go into the attempts. You can see here that there are seven attempts.
these are fake students they're not real students so no actual student data is being revealed so to see the scores on the quiz you're going to scroll over and as you can see we start seeing the, the scores here so for Abby's student who's the first student on the list we can see that she got the first que the first question wrong with a score of eight points so we're going to scroll back over we're going to review Abby's attempt now we can see here that she got question one incorrect to change this grade you're going to click make comment or override mark a second screen pops up and here you can change the mark here so we'll put one out of one and you can make a comment here if you want to and you'll click save and now you can see it shows that it's correct so at this point you'll click finish review and you'll need to go back into the attempts now at this point you're going to need to click regrade all what that will do is it'll just go through and it'll pick up any changes that you've made and regrade all of the quizzes. So we'll scroll down, scroll over, and now as you can see for Abby, she has all of the answers correct. I hope this has been helpful. Remember, help is only a phone call or click away.